Every time I see one of those jellyfish umbrellas, I really want to make my own. So when I went to a small festival in the beginning of August, I decided it was time to make my own. And as the theme of the festival was the year of the mushroom, I decided to make my umbrella into a mushroom. My name is Matilda and welcome back to Miss Matty. In today's video, I will take you through the process of me making the mushroom umbrella of my dreams. For my inspiration, I picked the Copronopsis atramentaria, also known as the inky cap or the common ink mushroom. Most of the species has black spores and gels that partly liquefy as the mushroom matures. And I think this is one of those really cool but also creepy and weird features of this mushroom. What's actually is really cool is that the ink actually can be used to write with. But of course the ink is not used to write with, it's actually used to spread spores around into surrounding areas. As the mushroom matures, the shape of the cap actually reminds me a little bit of an umbrella. And sometimes the ink it drips in a really cool way, which I actually really want to recreate for my umbrella. I wasn't able to find a really good royalty-free photo that shows this stage. So I drew my own little interpretation of this stage. It is blue and of course these mushrooms are not blue. But this is sort of my fantasy interpretation of this mushroom and I also want to make my umbrella blue so why not paint it blue? So you can see here the little drips that I'm talking about and the umbrella shaped cap. Now let's get on to making the umbrella. To make this project come alive I got a plastic see-through umbrella. Then I got LED fairy lights with a battery pack, craft wire to attach the fairy lights with, I also thrifted some new to me brushes and bought a pack of sponge brushes and picked out a selection from my acrylic paint collection that I could see could make this project come alive. I painted my umbrella on the inner side of the canopy. As such, I had to think about how to paint in reverse order and make the top layer first. I started with a blue black light paint to create a blue border around the umbrella. Then I painted white acrylic paint on top of the umbrella. I wanted to create a lighter color at the top and then let the umbrella become bluer and bluer. I later mixed some silver paint at the top together with white to create a more textured look. I also started to mix in some shades of blue with white and silver. I painted a white border along the edge of the blue border and then using white paint, I wanted to create a texture similar to the shaggy main variety. Once I had painted my shaggy mushroom bits on the whole umbrella, I did paint a layer of glitter paint all over my umbrella, with the exception of the blue border and the white top. I bought this blue neon color at the dollar store. I had no idea if it was gonna light up in UV or black light. But as my black light paint was not very covering, I wanted to have another paint to layer it with. I'm now gonna turn on one of the UV lights I own and see how the umbrella looks in this light. And as you can see, my dollar store paint does light up in UV, however, my white paint doesn't. If you do a project that you want to light up in UV or black light, I highly recommend having a light nearby 
to check occasionally on how your project looks in UV. So now it's finally time to create the drippy ink bits. I considered several options on how I could create them. One idea that I had was to create braids with t-shirt yarns. And that is because sometimes these drippy bits look a little bit like braids to me. So I thought that would be a really cute and fun look, but I quickly dismissed that idea. Another idea I had was to use this blue a metallic elastic and then tie some beads on the end but i couldn't find the beads that i knew i had somewhere here at home and as such i decided that i needed to head to the thrift store trying to find some other beads however at the thrift store i couldn't find any beads the only thing that i could find that sort of resembled beads was this weird grape thing and i know it looks so weird but i thought i could disassemble this grape thing and use those little crystals grapes whatever you call them but i quickly realized there are two problems with this idea number one the weight these were heavy i really didn't want to make my umbrella heavy to carry around and secondly i really don't want to be a hazard on the dance floor i was even considering making little blue tubes in this chiffon that i also thrifted but i was running out of time at this stage and sewing in chiffon even at the best of times is quite stressful if you ask me so i quickly dumped this idea and headed back to the thrift store when thrifting i found these very cool black tube things and even if it doesn't work with this project they might work for another fun project in the future I also found this pom-pom yarn, which I thought would create a really cute and whimsical look without the umbrella being accident prone or heavy to carry. I also found two mermaid tail blankets and one of them was broken, so I'm planning to make a little holder for the fairy light battery pack out of it. I measured out how big my battery pack pouch needed to be. Then I cut a piece double that measurement as I wanted to make the pouch double folded. I folded the fabric pieces right sides together and searched the two long side edges together to create a tube. Then I turned the tube inside out before turning half of the tube inside the other. I pulled the tube onto the umbrella stand with the raw edges facing down and placed it just over the handle. By hand, I then stitched the raw edges together at the bottom. Before gluing the pouch in place, I made sure that my battery pack did fit. And then using E6000 glue, I glue the pouch in place. If you want to make your own pouch, I would recommend you to be a bit more generous in size than I was and maybe also consider making a flap or something else that holds the battery pack in place when you do not hold the umbrella upright. I decided to hang my pom-pom yarn on each little tip on the umbrella. Before gluing it in place, I tried it out by tying a piece onto each tip. And once I was happy with the design, I used E6000 yet again to glue it in place. Once that was dry, I thought I should put a layer of polyethylene varnish on top to protect my design more but honestly i'm really not sure if this helped at all or not when the umbrella was dry from varnish and glue it was time to put the fairy lights in place as my fairy light was on a wire itself it was quite easy to put it in place on the shaft and the stretchers but to make sure the fairy lights would stay in place i also wrapped some extra wire around a couple of different places making sure to hide the edge of the wire so that it would not poke the umbrella when folded and not being used 
Then I adjusted the length for the pom pom yarn as I found it longer than it needed to be and tied the yarn ends inside the bottom pom pom. Oh my god, I am so happy with how it turned out. Look at it! <laughs> this umbrella was such a success. And now I will show you some photos of the umbrella in action at the festival. I just loved how fun it was to dance around with and how much joy it brought to people. I really hope you enjoyed following the process of me making this umbrella as much as I have enjoyed making it. And if you did, do not forget to hit the like button and until next time, bye!